Hi everybody, this is Bart from MultirotorForums.com. Uh, today we're talking about tools. Uh, this is video number two for our group build. Uh, we're doing an F450 uh, basic quad build. And this is about my 13th attempt to do this video. And it seems like the more takes it requires, the harder it gets. So uh, here we go. The tools that you see here, uh, this isn't, these, these aren't the only tools you're ever going to need, but they're a good start to do your build. And even some of these uh, you can get away with not having, but this is what I would recommend uh, if you're going to get started. The first is the soldering iron. I use a Weller WESD51. Uh, it's called a soldering station because the, the unit that controls the temperature is separate from the iron itself. Uh, this comes with a 1 16th inch uh, blade tip. So the tip is 1 16th of an inch wide. It's kind of flat. Uh, it's, it's flat and blunt instead of being pointy like what they would call a pencil tip. And uh, the first thing you have to do when you get this is you plug it in, turn it on, set it to about 700 or so, and you want to do what's called tinning the tip. And what you're doing is you're cleaning the tip and you're sealing it. You're coating it with solder. And what you do is you just put some on there and then you run it through the sponge. The sponge goes in the, st in the base that holds the soldering iron and when you wet the sponge and drag the tip through it, it cleans it. So um, you want to tin the tip before you start soldering with the soldering iron because if you don't, impurities, uh, when you go to do your first soldering joint, the impurities will stick to the bare metal of the tip and that's not good. So by doing this, you're cleaning the metal with the rosin in the solder and you're putting a layer of solder on there so that when it's, ex when it's exposed to impurities later on they won't stick to it. They'll come right off in the sponge, okay? So that's called tinning the tip. The soldering iron, or the solder that I use is from Radio Shack. Uh, I use this because it's available. Uh, there's Radio Shacks, there's probably four of them within a, a 10 minute drive of my house. So I use their 6040 rosin core solder. Uh, the size is .032 inches. Um, sometimes when I'm doing bigger jobs, like making wiring harnesses, uh, I use thicker solder. But for most everything else, uh, this is a good size to use, certainly for building the helicopters. Along with the soldering iron and the solder, a rosin pen is very helpful. Um, when you use the solder, it actually has rosin in it. Rosin is an acid that cleans the surfaces that are being soldered as they're being soldered and uh, the rosin cleans and it also helps the solder to remain very uh, fluid. So uh, if you have a joint that you've had to take apart and you're putting it back together again and you don't really want to have to add any more solder but you want it to flow nicely, you just rub the surfaces with uh, your rosin pen and it does the trick. It makes the joint clean, it allows the solder to flow, it doesn't clump or stick to the tip of your soldering iron and so that's very uh, handy to have. Also for soldering, this is called a solder sucker, and it's just a spring-loaded plunger with a tip. And so what this does is you press the plunger down and it locks. You melt your solder that you want to remove, and you put the nozzle down into the solder when it's uh, liquid. Press the button, and it sucks it up into here, and it's very effective. It works great. Another way to get rid of solder that you don't want is uh, desoldering braid. And all this is is braided bare copper and when you melt the solder and you put this down into it, it sticks to the braid, it gets soaked up in there and uh, allows you to remove it. So uh, that's the soldering setup. As far as hand tools go, um, most all of the helicopters that we build use Allen head bolts or Allen head screws. So you're going to need either a set of Allen wrenches. So these are called Allen wrenches. The sizes that you need to have available uh, range from one and a half to three. So one and a half to two and a half and three. So you can either buy a set like this, this is from Sears, um, or you can buy something like this from a, a hobby shop. Uh, these are made by a line. They have those four sizes. So these would be called Allen head driver, or I'm sorry, Allen drivers. These are called Allen wrenches. On the other end of the Allen head uh, bolt would be a nut and a common size, uh, and this is an odd size really, but for a number three uh, I'm sorry, for a three millimeter Allen screw, you would have a five and a half millimeter uh, driver to put the nut on. So for a three millimeter nut, you need a five and a half millimeter uh, nut driver. 
So that's what this is. This is a nut driver. This is from Turnigy, so it's Hobby King. And uh, if you can't get that, you could just go to the local home center. Chances are they have a 5.5 millimeter socket. And this one goes on a quarter inch uh, drive handle. So that's handy to have. I don't know if you'll necessarily need that exact size for an F450 build, but just along the way at some point you're going to need metric uh, nut drivers. Uh, a helpful uh, screwdriver size to have is a number one. So that's a number one Phillips tip. Okay. Uh, also for putting uh, the nuts onto the prop shafts to hold your propellers in place. A lot of times they just have either a hex nut or a hex nut with a cone on top, kind of like a little aerodynamic looking thing, like a spinner nut almost. And so a combination wrench for the size nuts that you have holding the propellers on. I think in uh, England they call these spanners, right? Anyway, uh, when you're working with wires, you need to take the insulation off of the wire so you can get to the underlying wire and actually solder it into place. Uh, you might use uh, an X-Acto knife, a razor blade, a pair of scissors, a pair of wire cutters to get the insulation off, but all those methods you run the risk of nicking the wire. So you want to get yourself a good quality wire stripper. And the wire stripper is good for a range of, size, uh, range of sizes of wires and each of these little notches corresponds to a wire size. So this is 16 gauge wire. So I would put it into the little notch there for 16 gauge wire. And when I squeeze it, all it does is cut the insulation and it slides right off, okay? And the reason it didn't, because the wire had a little bit of tinning left on it. I cut the wire where it was tinned. But anyway, um, if you cut the wire clean, right? put it in the 16, slides right off. Okay, so it doesn't nick the wire. And what you would do now is you would tin it, you would soak it with uh, enough solder to make it solid. And if there was a nick there because you used a razor blade, chances are that nick would become a crack, the crack would become a break, and this is all because of the vibration in the airframe of the helicopter. So wire strippers allow you to remove the insulation with the least risk of nicking the wires, okay? Provided you use the right notch for the right size wire. And then right along with uh, your wire strippers are wire cutters. These are actually called diagonal cutters, okay? They're very sharp, a good quality one will save you a lot of anguish later on. Uh, they're good for cutting wires, cutting zip ties, uh, cutting through all sorts of little stuff as you're putting together and taking apart helicopters. Um, as far as uh, having the means to attach things to the airframe, small size zip ties come in very handy. Electrical tape, double sided foam tape is very handy. And last but not least, the godfather of quickly attaching things that weren't meant originally to be attached to each other, Velcro. Okay? Um, when you're doing your building, chances are you're going to say to yourself, I have to remember to do that. And if you're like me, you'll forget. So I always have a notepad and a pencil. That's so I can keep track of things that I have to buy, things that I have to do, steps that I might skip over because I can't get to them at the moment um, in the build. So a notepad and a pencil is very handy. A hot glue gun. At some point or another, you're going to wish you had one. You can get them at any hobby store, craft store. They're a few bucks. And they're very handy. Uh, an organizing tote or an organizing tray. You might buy a package of washers and there'll be a hundred in there and you only need four. And sooner or later these things start to collect and if you don't have a place where you can keep them organized uh, it just starts to make a mess of your shop. You lose things, they drop on the floor, they spill all over the place. Never happened to me but I've heard it's uh, common. And then last but not least you're building uh, radio control helicopters that are controlled by little computer chips and software. Uh, we're not building rubber powered free flight models anymore. So you need a laptop or a computer that runs Windows. Almost all of the software that you're going to use to configure your uh, flight control systems, almost all of the software is Windows based. Uh, if you have an Apple based computer, either a desktop or a laptop, if you have one of the things that allows it to run Windows like uh, Parallels or VM Fusion, um, 
that'll work. Usually it works. Uh, you do hear people having troubles, but they usually straighten them out. But you're going to have to be able to hook your compute your flight control system up to a computer to configure it to monitor what it's doing when you're trying to set up your radio. There's a number of steps where we're going to need a computer. So I wish I could tell you that uh, you know all of your mechanical skills are going to get you through this. Um, but at some point, uh, being able to plug a computer in and use it uh, is going to be required. All right. So that's what we're going to need to get through the build. And the next video, I'm actually going to cover the basics of how the different parts of the helicopter work together to make the helicopter fly. Uh, somebody had asked a question, you know, are you programming the flight control or, you, or are you programming the radio to make everything work? And you're actually doing both. But when I saw that question, I thought maybe we should just go through the basic components real quick and uh, make sure everybody has a basic understanding of how they all interact and, and what their part is to make the helicopter fly. After that video, we will do the, uh, uh, we'll get started with the NASA uh, user manual. Okay? Those are the tools, and hopefully the video was in focus. I did this all this morning, and the video wasn't focused, and it drove me crazy, so that's why we just redid it. Have a great day.